Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to handle the event, the Wi-Fi event that is triggered when the SP32 connects to Wi-Fi network and then a local IP address is assigned to it. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Fire Beetle board from DFROP. So in the previous tutorial uh, where we started uh, learning how to use Wi-Fi events, I've mentioned that the event that we have used, uh, which is triggered when the SP32 uh, connects, uh, working as a station, connects to a Wi-Fi network, that event that is triggered at that point, um, the SP32 doesn't have an IP address yet. So this means that we cannot use, uh, for example, uh, a web uh, socket, so we cannot open a socket connection, and consequently we cannot use any protocols such as HTTP or web sockets that sits on top of sockets, uh, because, as mentioned, the SP32 doesn't have an IP address yet. So naturally we need to understand a little bit better which other events are available and one of them is the event that is triggered uh, when the SP32 gets an IP address. From that point onward in our application we should then sh be able to start using socket connections and consequently all the other uh, higher level protocols that sit on top of uh, sockets. So. Uh, we are going to see the, the, in more detail the code, but let me just say that the event identifier that we want um, to use is this one, system underscore event underscore sta underscore got underscore ip, which pretty much is the identifier for the event that is triggered uh, when we have an IP address on our device. But going uh, into the code, so the first thing we need to do is including the wifi.edge library like we did before. So we have access to the Wi-Fi extern variable that allows us to start a connection to the network and also to register uh, the event handling functions. After that, we need to declare the credentials of the Wi-Fi network, uh, the name and the password, and obviously we need to, to, to replace here these placeholders by the actual credentials uh, of your network. We're going to jump right to the implementation of the handling functions. We'll go back there in a minute. So uh, we are going to go directly to the setup function where we will start by opening a serial connection so we can output the results of our program. Then we are going to start registering um, the, the event handling functions. And as, as I've mentioned in the previous tutorial, we can register multiple event handling functions with multiple calls to this on event method. So the first uh, function that we, we are going to register will handle uh, the event that we already tackled in the previous tutorial, which is this one. It's quite big, the name, so it's basically the event that is triggered at the moment where the, the station, the SP32 working as a station, connects to the Wi-Fi network. Uh, but at this point, we don't have an IP address yet. So I'm using here this uh, handling function, Wi-Fi station connected, and inside in its implementation, as we are going to see, I'm going to print the IP address of the SP32 at this point, so we can check that none is assigned. After that, we are going to register an handling function for um, another handling function called Wi-Fi station got IP, which pretty much, as I've already said, will be triggered when uh, this system event station got IP uh, event is triggered. And this is it, how we register the two events that the two event handling functions that we are going to need. And after this point, we are going to call the begin method on the Wi-Fi extern variable, like we have done countless times, uh, passing as input the, the, um, the name of the network or SSID, which is in short service set identifier, and then the password uh, so we can connect to it. So the main loop here we, is going to be left empty because our uh, event handling functions will be triggered asynchronously when the event happens, so we don't need to do anything in the main loop function. So looking here into the implementation of the handling functions, recall from the previous tutorial that we need to follow this predefined signature uh, so we can register our functions. And then what we are going to do here, and recall that this, this, um, this handling function is for the moment where the station connects to the access point. So basically we are going to print a local IP address assigned to the SP32. We do this simply by, by call this function, which has a name that is self-explanatory. This, this method is called local IP. It takes no arguments and it will return as output the local IP address of the SP32. And this method is called on the Wi-Fi extern variable 
pretty much like all the Wi-Fi related methods that we have been covering so far. Then for the implementation of the, of the Wi-Fi station got IP function, um, we'll do exactly the same. We'll print a local IP address assigned to the SP32, but at this point we expect that uh, the SP32 already has an IP address, whereas at this point we expect it doesn't have one yet. And that's it. The code for this is really simple, not, not very different from what we have covered before. I've already uploaded it to my SP32. I'm just going to reset it. Let me just go down. And as you can see here, so it's printed here uh, in the first case. So uh, naturally, in terms of order of events, we first get the event from the station connection to the, to the, so, to the access point. So the first event corresponds to this, okay? And as expected, as you can see here, the IP address is all composed of zeros, which pretty much means that uh, no IP address is assigned to the SP32 at this point. Then when the second event is triggered, and it is always triggered after the first one, as you can see here, we already have an IP address. Naturally, this is a local IP address because that's how devices work when they are behind uh, a, a router, okay? So uh, this is a local IP address because your router will have uh, uh, an IP address that is seen by uh, the internet, but internally all, all the, the devices connected to that router, to the network that that router is hosting, um, follow this format. And basically, as you can see here, after this event, we already have an IP for our SP32. So from this point onward, if we had then some some application because this is just a demo code but naturally we would have here some application that would rely uh, on this connection so from this point onward we would now be able uh, to establish a socket connection for example to to create an http server to do an http request uh, to another host so after this after we have an ip address uh, this can be done, and that's it. This was just a simple, a simple tutorial to illustrate other another event that is available that is important for you to know if you plan on starting to use uh, Wi-Fi events. And also, it was important to show that we can register handling functions for multiple events, and everything works fine. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed.